I, I talked before, we end up with, uh, with little helpers. And these little helpers can be a machine which is on the desk and you ask questions and you do not have to, you get not, uh, if you ask a question, you do not get millions of lists back and you have to search what, what, what's valid for you. So there are, and, 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 and th there are possible little helpers around you and the, the learning of these helpers is done by, by a new generation of teachers. Yeah? So the, the programmers probably, as a visionary now, the programmers today turn into teachers of the new systems. But you do not have, or the, 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 the user do not have to teach the system. Okay. Yeah? And uh, once the system is teached, you can multiply it. So you only have to teach it one as you wrote the pro write the program and then you copy it. So um, you teach the system and then you can copy it as, and, but the, the system still learning why it's used by you. Yeah, but you not have to special learn or you not have to be a teacher or act like a teacher, but it learns automatically from your reaction from what you are doing and uh, it improves itself. So this is very, for me it's very, nice to see that the programmers, yeah, as I told you that in 20 years the computer we know today is gone, so uh, these programmers turn from men who set up a machine to teachers, to learn a machine. And this learning is infinite, it's um, a lot of things to learn to a machine, yes, and so for the user, a user must not be afraid of this machine, these are helpful machines trained by some other and learned by themselves and just support you to stay your life. Well, that's a very interesting story that you just shared with us about CSI, and I think a lot of people watching the video can really relate to that. Are there any other security projects that you're working on right now? Well, it's installed in uh, JFK, for example and in Frankfurt, in, 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 in Switzerland, in uh, Zurich Lothen. And there is an application running there which is checking uh, passenger name lists because of obviously there are people which are on the watch list and you have to compare their, na their names if somebody checks in whether he's on the watch list or not. And one of our applications uh, used by Swissport, which is a grand handler company, um, they are checking out uh, uh, these name lists uh, with the with the Homeland Security watch lists, and they find out whether a person is a suspect, a possible suspect, or not. And the problem on that is that some of those names, imagine a a person with a Asian name or Russian name or something, comes in Switzerland to the counter, and the Swiss operator has a Swiss keyboard. He can't even type the name the way he should. Mm -hmm. So so there are some fuzziness in those names already when they are captured. And still the system should find the ones matching together. And that's really what the system is doing. Now, another area where we are in already is the medi medical, the medical uh, research. And because on the medical side, it's also a question of you have so much data and everybody's publishing, everybody is, you know, announcing and stem cells or, or whatever you have, uh, medications, symptoms, treatments and all that. And even a doctor has a hard time to um, overview all these new informations coming in every day. So there we're working with universities in Switzerland and, and the United States on a project in, in organizing this massive amount of information coming on your desk every day so that the your butler your your um, uh, virtual twin is helping you to organize that information so he will read that for you and select it for you according so what you're saying is it, in relation to the no-fly list is that if I'm Russian and I walk up to an airline counter in Switzerland and you can't type my name because the keyboard doesn't have the characters that I you would need for my name. This system would is intelligent enough and learns enough by patterning that it could actually find me if I was on a no-fly list. Is that correct? That's correct because what the girl would do at the counter, she would type it similar using in a similar character instead of the one maybe with the little signs on top and so on. 
so then the it's a kind of a phonetical match so the system would find that this is the most closest version even if it's not really right written and you have we have an example on that I mean we had that name which was given to the CIA for that bomber and then it was misspelled and then because it was misspelled they couldn't find it quickly enough I mean this is something which is real I mean those problems are real and there are many companies trying to solve that problem but it's not easy to solve because the system has to view that as a pattern much more than uh, there are no rules on that because the, the pattern can be in any direction so the system must be able to to find the closest one and, and bring you a selection of possibilities and then of course with the interaction biological inspired with the interaction then you will you will have a, a short selection of the most possible versions of and then you will decide on that it's not the system which decides but it brings you all the information and the pointed information very focused so that the, the expert then can can make the decision semantic system is a Swiss company originally and now it's the headquarters has been moved and now it is officially a US company why did you decide to move it from Switzerland to the United States well, at the time when we have been a Swiss company, we have been appointed by Red Herring. Red Herring is a rating agent for uh, um, IT companies and and they do an award. So we won uh, the award in Europe being a top 100 company uh, and most promising technology and uh, so, so we had an invitation being not only top 100 but being top 10 inside the top 100 and then we had an invitation to come here just a year ago to get a prize mm -hmm. so we came here and we get that prize and we get to know uh, some people from an organization called the security network Michael Jones is the uh, CEO of the uh, security network told us well once you're here on the Red Herring Award and you have such a new advanced technology you have to stay you have to come to our exhibition we have CIA, we have FBI, we have DOD, DHS, they're all there. And since you have these solutions on the airport and on the, on the crime scene and so on, you have to visit us on that. So I decided last year to extend my stay and to go to that summit. And we made so many contacts that in the same week we decided to move the company here. So just a year ago, we, we had this decision because we have been at that summit and because the attention and the reception was so warm and, and overwhelming so that we said, okay, we, we, we do that. And now after one year, exactly, we have been back at the summit. We presented the latest version of our uh, technology and we became a US company by then. So that was uh, why we are here now, because the markets and because people told us, yeah, that's what we need. We need to have your technology. So now that you're a, officially a U.S. company, how are you organized here in the United States? Well, we started to build up a team here because now we are uh, coming from the lab situation into the product situation. So we're now selling our products, our technology. So we needed to have a, a team. So I needed to have a president for the company. We needed to have technicians. And we needed to have an anchor with the science side. So we entered the CAP program at the UCSD, at the university. So, so I expect to grow the company rapidly here with a fair number of uh, technical staff, sales staff, and everything so that we can support our, our uh, um, partners and OEMs and customers.